Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Real Talk page. My name is Ayala. Let me just put some contact information down in the comments in case anybody is looking for resources. But good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ayala again. Good afternoon. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the Community Health Education and Training Coordinator here at Women Walker Health. Um, and this afternoon's live is on STIs in the district as a part of our Sex, Milk, and Cookies revival. So I've got my milk and cookies. <laughs> and um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Women Walker's community health team has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platform, including this one. And we cover various topics about HIV and STIs and sexual health practices, um, including access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. So what is Sex, Milk, and Cookies? Sex, Milk, and Cookies is a safe space uh, for you to learn about sexual health, ask questions, and start a conversation on a variety of topics, typically with a theme focused on safer sex practices with milk and cookies. <laughs> this event used to be held in person where we could enjoy the delicious milk and cookies together, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, these events are being held virtually um, and on, on this Instagram page, Real Talk DC. Please feel free to join in with questions, conversations, and your own socially distant milk and cookies. And in today's live, we will, we will be discussing STIs in the district and the relevance for you specifically. Although many STIs or sexually transmitted effect infections are preventable, there are more than 20 million estimated new cases in the United States each year. The CDC estimates that one in five uh, people in the United States have an STI, um, and STIs with the highest prevalence and incidence in the U.S. are HPV, HSV, or herpes, uh, trichomoniasis, or trich, chlamydia, HIV, gonorrhea, syphilis, and HBV in that order. Levels have been steadily increasing up until 2020 when we noticed a slight decline. However, the data um, must be viewed in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, which had an immense impact on the availability, accessibility, utilization of disease screening, prevention, and care services, even here at Whitman Walker. Um, so the presented data that we're going to go over today um, should be interpreted cautiously given the decline in testing and other preventative health um, services that were experienced that year, both here in D.C. at Women Walker and across the country. But even in the face of the pandemic, 2.4 cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis were reported in that year, 2020. Unfortunately, D.C. is a nation, nationwide hotspot for these infections. Um, and although young people make up 25% of the sexually active population, they contract about 50% of all new sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, annually. In 2018, so before the pandemic, um, combined cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis reached a record high. Um, and following a five-year continuous increase and increase and increase. Um, and sex is a part of many adolescents and young people's lives, um, and evidence suggests that access to clinical care and education on self safe sex, healthy relationships, and routine screenings um, should be as well included in, in lowering these numbers. The prevalence of STIs, including HIV, is higher among Black young people and young people in D.C., um, are diagnosed with HIV at nearly twice the national rate. While our neighbor Baltimore ranks the highest nationwide when it comes to STIs, Washington DC specifically ranks very highly in the following categories for STIs. It's number four um, in syphilis rates, which has 43.8 cases per 100,000 people. In 2019, this was 2,000, I'm sorry, this was 236 cases uh, sorry, in 2020, this was 236 cases down from 310 in 2019. Um, and that included nine of those cases, nine and 10 were men, three and five were black, um, three and, and two and five were in 30 to 39. And there was a 183% increase in women testing positive for syphilis um, ages, 15, ages 15 to 24 since, um, since 2016. 
DC is also number two um, out only after Baltimore in chlamydia rates with 1,328 affected people per 100,000 people. This number uh, was two, sorry, this number in 2020 was 5,956, down from 9,245 9, the year before. And of those chlamydia rates, half of them are, are women, are those identifying as women, um, one in five between the ages of 13 and 19, and one in two between the ages of 20 and 29. Another rate that ranks higher in the Washington D.C. area is for gonorrhea. For gonorrhea, we are Washington D.C. is number five, uh, with 624 people per 100,000 residents. This meant that in it was 3,593 in 2020, down from 4,290 in 2019. So you can see how the pandemic lowered the numbers for each each. Um, each of the testing areas. Uh, for gonorrhea, seven out of 10 of those um, testing positive were men, and half of them were ages 20 to 29. But in DC, when compared to nationwide in general, in the age range of 15 to 24, rates of all three, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, are about double the national rates. And despite the high rates of chlamydia and gonorrhea among DC youth, uh, many cases are asymptomatic and go undetected, allowing them to spread even further. Uh, in addition to that, only about 70% of high school youth reported using a condom during their most recent sexual intercourse. Um, and taken together, these factors contribute to the spread of infection and heighten the risk for long-term complications. But again, this data must be viewed in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, which had an immense impact on the availability, accessibility, and utilization of disease screening, prevention, and care services. Um, so we interpret this data cautiously and comparing it to, when comparing it to other years before um, and viewing the trends as well. Other things that have affected the spread of SCIs in the district are um, the rise of other types of birth control usage. So uh, for instance, IUDs are becoming increasingly a popular birth control method, especially with college age uh, women in the Washington DC metro area. Uh, we're seeing a direct correlation with the rise of IUDs and SCIs in this age group. Um, and we need to stop believing that, they'll, that we will be safe from pregnancy and STIs without wearing condoms. Um, other social factors that can contribute to uh, the rise of SCIs are social things like poverty, uh, low educational attainment, um, and unemployment, which can, um, the three of those can prevent, present barriers uh, to accessing quality sexual health care. Living without consistent SCI screenings and medical care um, can lead to higher rates of SCIs, especially untreated ones. The CDC um, specifically attributes the following factors to the rise of STDs in the United States. Um, they attribute to drug use, poverty, stigma, and unstable housing, which can reduce access to STD prevention and care. They also attribute this to decreased condom use, uh, especially among vulnerable groups, including young people and gay and bisexual men. Uh, also cuts to SED programs at the state and local level. In recent years, more than half of local programs have experienced budget cuts, resulting in clinic closures, reduced screening, staff loss, and reduced patient follow-up and linkage to care services. So that's why these are, that's, those are three of the things that the CDC attributes to the rise, of, the continual rise of STIs in the United States. Also, considering that many of these STIs spread um, are infections with no symptoms. So for instance, um, chlamydia infections oftentimes have no symptoms, but can still cause permanent damage to reproductive organs. Um, and untreated chlamydia rarely causes, um, it, in men rarely causes life-threatening damage, but can cause painful testicular swelling. And among women, uh, untreated chlamydia can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease, inability to get pregnant or ectopic pregnancy, a life-threatening condition in which the fertilized egg develops outside of the uterus. So that's why it's very important that we um, utilize these prevention methods um, to reduce the spread of SCIs, especially for us here in the district. 
Um, there are free to SCI testings available in the district here at Whitman Health, Whitman Walker Health, at both of our locations. Um, our Max Robinson Center, that is 20 sorry, 2301 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. And at our 1525 location, that is 1525 14th Street. And STI and HIV tests are available Monday through Friday um, from about nine to four. Um, it is by appointment only, so please call 202-797-4439 to make an appointment. To say it one more time, the number is 202-797-4439. Call that to make an appointment. Appointments are available from Monday to Friday again, um, and we also have them available through our mobile mobile units. Um, we will do a live this month specifically on what happens during one of these testing visits and what that looks like um, so you don't feel as nervous going into it. Um, you can also ask questions when you call to schedule your appointment if you have any questions or concerns about what how that visit is going to go. Another resource in the DC area is the DC Health Department. So you can go to getcheckdc.org for free, convenient, and safe HIV and STD testing for DC residents, both at home and walk-in uh, testings. Effective prevention and treatment strategies combat the, the spread of STIs. Um, and while abstinence is the only completely effective prevention strategy, having a single sexual partner, reducing the number of sex partners, and making sure to use latex condoms and or dental dams properly during sex may reduce transmission. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And before we go, I want to give you some few reminders about the various uh, viruses that we're currently fighting as a society when it comes to COVID-19, RSV, and flu. If you've already gotten vaccinated, congratulations. You've taken a wonderful step to preventing yourself, loved ones, and your community from testing from illness. Uh, multiple variants have soared across the world, and it's totally understandable why you might not want to keep wearing your mask or uh, why you might want to keep wearing your mask or to keep this in because no vaccine is 100% effective. Um, more contagious variants are spreading, and there are very few protocols in place to actually verify if folks around you um, are, t are vaccinated or um, their, their status, whether they're positive um, as well. So keep on staying alert. If you have been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment to, if you have not been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker Health has COVID-19 vaccines available. Please reach out to us at 202-207-2480. Again, that number is 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. If you're having trouble making an appointment, please um, get in contact with your local health department. And that information is also available on the Whitman Walker website, whitman-walker.org. Please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, quarantining and social distancing and the like. It's very important that you consider getting the vaccine, discussing precautionary members, measures with those around you. Um, be mindful of masks and keep your distance, um, but especially when you don't know whether a person has been vaccinated or not. Also keep in mind that monkeypox or mpox have been circulating while numbers are declining. It's still out there. And I would recommend getting in contact with your local health department for more information on getting the vaccine. That information is available on the Whitman Walker website. Um, but in DC, you can pre-register for an mpox vaccine at dchealth.dc.gov slash page slash monkeypox. We also, there also are several walk-up locations to receive the mpox vaccine. Information on those walk-up sites are also on the Whitman-Walker.org website. Remember to continue following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Whitman Walker and checking the website Whitman-Walker.org for the most up-to-date information on our services. For more COVID-19 resources and general Whitman Walker services, please call us at 202-797-4439. Follow some of our other programs in Whitman Walker Health Family at this page, Real Talk DC, and at No Filter DC, and at Whitman Walker Health. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you enjoy your milk and cookies and tune in next week for more information on how to keep yourself safe. Have a wonderful day and take care.